Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to talk about California. I'm a California. I was born here. I visited many places in America, but quite honestly, I have a hard time living most places. I have difficulty even living in Calaveras County. And why is that the case? Because I love the diversity of this state. And we see less of it other places, we see less of the diversity in Calaveras. In Stockton and San Francisco, you recognize that this is an incredibly complex population and culture. It, diversity can be explained in terms of land and regions. Most certainly we're one of the most diverse in that regard. We have the Bay Area, Redwood Empire, that's up the northern coast, and it's very, very different in culture and everything. Sacramento Valley and San Joaquin Valley, they're all part of the Great Valley, but they are different in what they grow and the culture again. We have the Northeast State, a little corner up there that's, you know, wants to be part of the state of Jefferson. Foothills, same way, to a large degree. Inland Empire and in Orange County. They're very different than Los Angeles County. And then, of course, San Diego, which is right next to Mexico and has a very large Hispanic population. It's pretty conservative, though. And then we have the desert area, which is agricultural and predominantly Hispanic. Our resources are also diverse. We are probably the richest agricultural area in the world. We also have lumbering, although it's much less. We have a lot of hydroelectric power, lots of manufacturing. You go to places like Long Beach, you can see the manufacturing capabilities. We have one of the finest college education systems in the world with two systems, the University of California system and California State University system. We have lots of immigrants. That's a resource that you can't believe. Economists continuously encourage American, America to allow more immigrants in. We need them. We're an aging population, but we, we resist that to some degree, even though it makes sense. But California does 43%, last I counted, of uh, Californians speak a language other than English at home. We have incredible different kinds of groups of people. Historically, Spanish, or recently, Mexican. Very different. Chinese, they came over early, and well, certainly now the Asian population in California is very high. They had a 49er culture and people, Japanese, Filipino. Stockton and Vallejo, both places I've lived. A very high Filipino populations. South Asian. Increasingly, we find a wide variety of people from Pakistan, India, and those areas. Also, there's the South yeah, East uh, Asian populations of Vietnam, Cambodia, and they're very different. And yet, we seem to get along very well. We seem to appreciate each other's culture. Our culture, our uh, industry, we're increasingly post-industrial. Most workers in California are information workers. Silicon Valley is the most prominent instance of that, but pretty much is everywhere. Even farming. You go and talk to the farmers, they can tell you all about the markets that are in Europe. They can tell you, give you satellite maps of where they've watered or where they need to water. We have a lot of people who work as information workers. But we also have a very high degree of income inequality, something we're not very proud of. One argument people have made, and I'm not sure I completely agree with it, is that California is an example of hyper pluralism. We are so divided up into all these different kinds of groups that we have an absence of consensus. Sometimes you can kind of recognize that. We seem to be very, very progressive, 
but we have the most restrictive property tax uh, provisions in the country. So on top of being very progressive, we have to use 42% of our state budget to fund education because property taxes don't pay for it. In Maryland, only 1% of the state budget goes to education because property taxes pay for local education. And they put more money into K through 12 than we do. In fact, virtually all states do. So again, we have this strange kind of conflict at times. I would argue that at least temporarily, the large democratic majorities and the legislatures and the fact that every statewide office is now held by a Democrat, we have less, but you do notice we have conflict often between Democratic governors and the Democratic legislature. They don't necessarily agree on where we should go. Quick analysis of our institution, so you have some idea of what it looks like. It's quite different than federal. We have a 80 member assembly that compares to 435 in the House of Representatives. It's more than our Senate at the national level. We have a state Senate with only 40 members. And unlike the federal, ours is basically on equal population. Every one of them has equal population. It's not where Wisconsin maybe has the same number as California that has the same number as Montana. No, the, uh, they're all equal in terms of that population. Like the federal system, they have uh, committees. There's uh, 28 standing committees in the assembly and 25 in the Senate. Well, it keeps those 40 members in the Senate real busy because they have 25 committees and they need more than one, two people on each one. And we're well staffed year round. There are some legislators still in, legislature still in America where they only meet every two years. Not very many anymore, but it's, it's the case. No, our legislature meets, you know, very, very regularly. Every year, most months, and yes, they take their breaks, but they do operate on a pretty much continuous basis. Our executive is also more complicated. We have a governor and a lieutenant governor, a secretary of state, an attorney general, treasurer, a controller, superintendent of public education, insurance commissioner, board of equalization members, and more, all of whom are elected statewide. We also have two senators like statewide. So unlike at the federal level, where you basically have a single office running, you know, the president's the only one that runs in the entire, for the entire country, we have all these people. So most certainly the governor has to share a spotlight with quite a few other people, both during elections and while running his office. We also have direct education, um, excuse me, direct uh, democracy. This started with uh, the progressive Hiram Johnson back in the 1920s. This is your referendums where the legislature passes something. We disagree, we collect signatures and we find it illegal. We find it, but we don't want it. We have initiatives where you just go out and gather signatures and then we vote on it. Most of we, some of these, we can even make constitutional amendments very, very easily. I, it's amazing to me that uh, just a few percentage of Americans can stop any change constitutional amendments at the national level. But a simple majority of Californians can. We also have weak parties, as through the federal. That's not something you can get rid of. Our county and local governments, however, are different. They have to be creatures of the state. What I mean by that is technically, legally, California can destroy, create cities, special districts, counties. Now, politically, it'd be very difficult. We have 58 counties, the largest being LA, with about 10 million, 10 million people in LA County. 
There's 1,100 and about 29, according to the latest figures, in Alpine County. <laughs> Very different. And we have a mix all the way between. Counties often act almost like administrative instruments of the state. The state has a Department of Health Services or basically public health. Counties have public health departments. They have social services in the state. Counties have social services. Cities are more independent. Cities basically do not share as many functions as do uh, counties with state functions. And of course, there is a very strong Department of Education at the state level, but the boards of education for each county and then school districts are still uh, somewhat independent, although they most certainly have to follow the guidelines at the state level. It is a large diversity in these areas. And I think that you could be a surprise to find that 93% of all legal action court cases occur at the county level or below. Similarly, about the same number percentage of policemen work at the county sheriffs, deputies, I work with city policemen. Street cleaning, water provision, management of sewage, education of your children, mosquito abatement, fire prevention. Most of these are done at the local level. So it is a very important function. And I hope that some of you have attended meetings as your project in lieu of the term paper, meetings at counties, boards of education or cities to see that this really is a vital aspect of our overall political scene. Thank you very much. This is the last lecture in this course. This is the last module in the course. I'd like to you know, hope that you have really learned something and that you will take this forward and take this experience to further your education, to be a better self-learner, more critical thinker, but do it in a positive fashion. Don't just criticize to criticize. Criticize when it's necessary and then support when it's necessary. Thank you very much. Bye.